We now know what rules are and how to build a decision tree for our datasets. But how exactly are we choosing the best features for each split? Split meaning that we introduce a new node in the tree, which corresponds to a rule. In the example of the previous video, where we designed a decision tree to classify dogs, cats and birds, we used a very basic measure to choose a good split. We looked at how many data points are misclassified in absolute numbers. While this is a very easy to use um, split for an example of what a decision tree is, in practice we would use different measures to compute the best splits. And thus I will talk about entropy and its connection to information gain, as well as genie impurity. Let's look at a random dataset, which we now abstract once again using simple circles to represent individual data points. We will consider the binary case for now, where one class is represented by the colored circles and the other by the dark ones. Let's draw a random split. Amazing! Seemingly we have a perfect split already. Well, that's it for the video then. I'm just kidding. Let's consider another split. As you can see, we will most likely misclassify our colored class on the right side of the split as there are mostly dark circles and just one colored one. But how do we measure this quality? In the end, our algorithm needs some quantified measure to work on its own. Well, this is where information gain comes into place. To understand information gain, however, we first need to have a talk about entropy. Very simplified, entropy tells us how much variance our dataset has related to the class labels. The formula for computing the entropy is given by taking the negative sum over each class probability times the log of the same. So as an example, if we only have our colored class, this equation would give us zero as a result. This means the lower our entropy is, the less variance in terms of different classes we have. We can compute the same for our example dataset, where we have seven colored data points and three dark ones. As you can see, we have a much higher value of 0.88 now. Okay, so where do we go from here? Whenever we draw a new split, we can compute the entropy of all the splits that we have created. So in this case, for the left side and the right side. The entropy for the left side is zero, as it just contains colored data points. On the right side, we now have one colored data point and three dark ones. This gives an entropy of 0.81. We will now weight the splits and add them. As the left side has six data points, and the right side has 4, we weight them using 60% and 40%, and calculate 0.6 times entropy of left split plus 0.4 times entropy of the right split. This gives us a value of 0.32 as entropy for our split. Now, how does this relate to the other term I have mentioned, information gain? The information gain is very simple to compute once you know the entropy, as it is just 1 minus the entropy. This gives us information about how much of the entropy, the variance, we have removed with our chosen split. This means that the closer we are to 1, the better the chosen split is. After all, the ideal split would only represent one class on each side, which would result in an entropy of 0 for both sides. In other words, we compute multiple splits and pick the one with the highest information gain to remove as much class variance in the resulting splits as possible. Okay, another metric that I have mentioned earlier is the Gini impurity. The Gini impurity is describing the probability of incorrectly classifying a randomly chosen data point of our dataset. The calculation looks similar to the entropy. We take the positive sum over the probability of each class times 1 minus this probability. For our complete dataset of 7 colored data points and 3 dark ones, we would get 0.42 as a result. Now let's once again consider the split from before. Similar to before, we compute the genie impurity for both sides. The left side, once again, is perfectly split as it only contains colored data points. Thus, our genie impurity is zero. For the right side, we get 0.38. And now we calculate the weighted sum again, where the left side is weighted with 60% and the right split with 40%, according to the number of data points. This then gives us a result of 0.15. We now take the genie impurity of our new split and subtract it from our original value, meaning we calculate 0.42 minus 0.15, which gives us 0.27. This is called genie gain, and similar to our information gain, will be used to determine the best possible split by picking the highest genie gain across all possible splits. 
And in both cases, we continue to do the same procedure for each new split that we want to introduce as a rule. For example, we now take the right split as our new complete dataset and look for the best split within this subset once again. Picking the split with the highest information gain or Gini gain and so on. In our example, of course, we would immediately go for a perfect split if we would choose based on our measures, but this would be a rather boring calculation.